I'm just going to say it. Vegito is the best fusion in Dragon Ball. Let's analyze why the next Dragon Ball needs to have 100% more Vegito. Dragon Ball Z was a TV series where certain fights were basically events. Those episodes where Goku fought Frieza or when Gohan fought Cell were instant legends. The Vegito vs Majin Buu fight was definitely one of those. Oh, it feels like a long time ago, but in the days before Gods of Destruction and Ultra Instinct, Majin Buu was the toughest game in town. After the evil Buu absorbed Ultimate Gohan, he became Super Buu and seemed pretty unbeatable. Then Vegeta and Goku did the unthinkable. They used the Patara earrings to fuse together into an incredibly powerful new being, Vegito. This new fusion freaking blew my mind when I saw him as a kid. I literally went to get the Super Vegito action figure immediately after watching the episode. Looking back over Vegito vs Super Boo, I can see why. Vegito was more than just a little faster and stronger than Goku and Vegito were. Vegito was basically a different person with a completely different attitude. So let's look at these two fighters separately to see just what makes Vegito so special. So Goku generally is a fighter who is fierce, but fair to a fault. He will gladly fight with one arm behind his back just to make the match more of a challenge. In fact, his greatest strength and weakness is that he has a single-minded focus on always getting to his next great fight. He doesn't always take into account small factors like whether or not millions of lives are on the line either. That drive is what causes him to achieve legendary levels of power, but also lose to a ray gun in Resurrection F because he wouldn't destroy his evil arch nemesis. For Vegeta, on the other hand, it's not so much about the fight as it is the glory. He was born into Saiyan royalty, and that attitude has only increased over the years. This attitude has led to quite the vicious cycle for Vegeta. He usually fights someone already assuming that he is the most powerful thing in the universe. Then when he's beaten, it hurts his pride so much that he would literally push himself to any physical extreme to gain more power. Then the whole merry-go-round starts all over again. While it does ultimately make him one of the greatest fighters in Dragon Ball, it has also kept him from ever being the guy who gets to take down the big villain and earn that glory he desperately seeks. So how does this combine into Vegito? Well, Goku's drive for an entertaining fight and Vegeta's royal pride together produce what might be the most confident character in the franchise. This time, it is 100% justified. His fighting style was cocky and fierce. His enhanced speed made him able to easily dodge Buu's attacks and only fight with his legs. Then, when Super Buu would get close, Vegito would unleash a powerful volley that showed he had unbelievable power even by DBZ standards. Truthfully, we likely never got to see the extent of Vegito's power since his only appearances were so short. Powerful attacks aren't the only thing that shows how much strength lies beneath. Sometimes, a fighter's style can tell you more than anything else. What happens when you fuse together two huge Saiyan egos? Why, an ego even bigger than King Kai's planet, of course. Vegito was a good deal more entertaining than most Dragon Ball fighters. His doubled Saiyan pride made him very quippy as he pounded the pink off of Super Buu. Throughout the entire fight, he was throwing sarcastic comments Boo's way. This might just seem like a casual character choice, but it brought a whole new level to this fight. This was a villain who had managed to absorb most of the cast by this point, and Vegeta wasn't even worried about it. Even when Vegeta was losing, he was winning. It seemed like Super Boo managed to absorb him as well, but this was only a ruse to save all the others. Apparently, if you combine the intellects of both Vegeta and Goku, you actually get a pretty excellent strategist. That's not something these two are always known for. Unfortunately, that Saiyan ego was what ultimately did it in though. They decided to split again to allow Goku to save the day again. For a second there though, it seemed like Vegito was going to shake things up and change the DBZ formula. Honestly, I still think he should. 
So what exactly is Vegito's place in the story, and why should he be given a more important role in it? Well, for that we need to look at how Goku and Vegeta have grown because of each other. Let's just say they've had a contentious relationship. Goku and Vegeta met when Vegeta was trying to take over Earth and Goku had none of it. Their fight was another one of these events as each one continued to get the upper hand. Seriously, Goku would pull off a spirit bomb, then Vegeta would show off his ape form. It was one of the closest showdowns we've seen even to this day. Both of their bodies were literally shattered after their fight. Then the two had a kind of power level arms race to see which of them would achieve Super Saiyan and defeat Frieza. Goku managed to get Super Saiyan first and obliterated Vegeta's ultimate enemy. This hurt to his pride formed the gulf between Vegeta and Goku, where the Saiyan Prince is always pushing himself to catch up to Goku and even surpass him. This came to a head in the Majin Buu arc where Vegeta had a brief relapse back into his old evil self. Majin Vegeta and Goku had an epic fight that showed just how jealous and spiteful Vegeta felt towards Goku. Ultimately, Vegeta sacrifices himself and earns redemption, but not before revealing that darkness that stayed inside him. That's why Goku and Vegeta fusing was the perfect thematic ending to the Buu arc. It began with Goku and Vegeta at each other's throats and could have ended with Goku and Vegeta finally coming together. While the ending was another fun victory for Goku, it missed the chance to strike at something more powerful. So when Vegito showed up again in Dragon Ball Super, I was like, finally! You see, Dragon Ball Super seemed to be doubling down on the whole Goku-Vegeta thing. While Dragon Ball Z was more of an ensemble piece, with characters like Gohan often taking over the protagonist role for Goku, Super was the Vegeta and Goku show. Well, uh, probably the Goku and also Vegeta show. It was all about these two warriors learning to work together and put aside their differences in order to save the world. Literally, the only way to make a Super Saiyan God was for a bunch of Saiyans to draw power from each other to pick a God. It seemed as though we were going to have a We're Stronger Together message in regards to Vegeta and Goku's journey. Fast forward to Vegito's return and his fight with that dastardly Zamasu. In this pre-Ultra Instinct era, it actually seemed like Vegeta and Goku were on somewhat equal footing. Vegeta even showed off a new technique that balanced Super Saiyan God with Super Saiyan Blue. This would have been the perfect time to show that Vegeta and Goku's unlikely friendship was more powerful than either of them alone. Especially Especially because of who they were fighting. Zamasu was a guy whose whole worldview was that mortals were fundamentally flawed and should be wiped out. His cynicism grew to such extreme levels that they had to call in a god to erase an entire timeline just to defeat him. While this was a cool showing of Lord Zeno's amazing power and a setup for the next arc, it didn't really disprove his point. You know what would have disproved his point? Vegito. Seriously, think about it. Is there a more savage race in the entire universe than the Saiyans? These guys literally shoot babies at planets with the hope that they'll grow up and conquer them to sell. They are warriors who have made an entire society out of immortals' worst instincts. So how much would it destroy Zamasu's worldview if two Saiyans who hated each other were able to join together at the atomic level in order to save the universe? It would prove that even the most seemingly savage mortals could rise above their base instincts in order to join together and save everyone. It would have proved that Zamasu was wrong all along. It would have showed that Whis's ultimate lesson in training them together was that they were stronger as one. It would have proven that Future Trunks was right to idolize Goku and Vegeta all those years. Once again, it was the perfect ending to that saga. Except then, the fusion failed and Vegito was gone forever. This leads us to my next point, because they would do this yet again, only this time they did it without my boy Vegito. In Dragon Ball Super Broly, they very nearly made all of my dreams come true. The whole setup was there. The movie started with our most in-depth look into the Saiyan race. We were introduced to three separate children from three very different backgrounds. Vegeta was the infant Saiyan prince whose power was dwarfed by the already legendary Broly's. Meanwhile, Goku was a child born outside of the typical Saiyan system. Vegeta and Goku represented the aristocracy and the lower class of Saiyan culture, while Broly embodied the wild, untamable rage 
the culture was built around. Then, Vegeta and Goku clashed against that rage only to discover that the two of them were helpless against it. Only together as one could they finish Broly off. It was exactly what I wanted. Almost. Look, I love Gogeta as much as the next person. It was definitely cool that they canonized this fan-favorite character, and it made sense to use that particular fusion technique in that situation. That being said, it seemed like a bit of a waste of what they'd been setting up. It didn't help that they undercut the tension of the entire film with a tired rehash of the bit where the fusion dance is really hard to get down. You really mean to tell me that Vegeta and Goku are so graceful that they can move ten times faster than the human eye can see with extreme precision, but putting their fingers together is too hard? Broly was probably my favorite Dragon Ball movie, but that part could have been left on the cutting room floor. The Patara fusion could have kept the tension and played into the arc they established. Two times before, Goku and Vegeta came to the realization that they could only defeat an enemy by fusing. Then, both times that fusion failed due to arrogance and pride getting the best of them. It would have been the perfect third times the charm moment to have Vegito be the one that was so powerful he punched Broly out of reality. It was his turn to be the one who took out the bad guy. Then they gave it to Gogeta, who while still cool, just looks like a taller version of Gotenks with less personality. Still, it's hard to complain about one of the best fights in Dragon Ball Super. There's also still time for them to do this same arc with other characters. Piccolo and Gohan have both been somewhat sidelined in the era where everyone has god powers. It might be cool to see those two fuse together to prove that the little guys still have some fight in them. Piccolo is known for that sort of thing. Man, what would you even call him though? Piccohan? Gokolo? Eh, I'm sure they'll come up with something. Well, there you have it. All the reasons why Vegito is the best fusion in the Dragon Ball franchise. I suppose there is still time for him to get his due, but what do you guys think? Are you Team Vegito or Team Gogeta? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to CBR.